Hey, everybody. Welcome to a special. It's eight, eight o'clock. It's a little earlier than we usually do these things. But hey, we've got uh, I got a full slate and I've got Micah in the studio tonight. We're going to be doing a Comic Connect preview. Hello. hello. Snazzy it, new intro. I like it. I like the custom intro. I think it's, you know, it, it does add a little bit of flair. It gets everybody in the mood to mm -hmm. get the show started. A little consistency, too. Yes. Yes. So we're going to we're going to we're going to go as quickly as possible because we're going right. to have a lot. So yeah. uh, briefly, we have an auction. It ends on Monday, seven o'clock Eastern time. Comic Connect. That's uh, information on the screen there under my name. Un well, under my face. <laughs> and uh, let's let's get to it. So yeah. and uh, it's a comicconnect.com, everybody. Comic like it says right there next to Mike's name. And it's uh, art is first. First, yes, uh, it's right a five day, it is a five day event auction, but the art always ends on Monday and it's a Monday yeah. through Friday. Sometimes there's a small session before the art, but this time art first. Okay. So, uh, if you want that Neil Adams piece, you got to be on at seven o'clock because it's, I think, the second thing. I think it goes Art Adams Neil Adams. Right, because you um, guys uh, do like a lot of the auction houses do the arts uh, by artist name, last name, kind of last name. descending. So, uh, yeah. That makes sense. It does make the most sense. Except uh, with yours, things can get staggered because of the little, you know, they the, can, the way things can they be can. extended. Uh, so you got to pay attention. You like to keep people on their toes. Hey, but anyway, wrong with that. let's get to the uh, to the first piece, which is so behind me, behind me, as much of it as I can lay out. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, uh, collecting for over 30 years now, do, doing this professionally for since like 2007. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the nicest pieces of art I've ever seen. Uh, when this came into the office, everybody stopped to look at it. It's uh, it's just ridiculous. So uh, it, let's just look at the pictures on the screen here because it's better than me just flipping through them with Claire and everything. Uh, so this creepy 58 Richard Corbin werewolf story uh, changed into something comfortable. It's, uh, it's just, it, I mean, the, the, the images are great. The art in person is, um, it's interesting in a way that I didn't know art could be, you know, having seen a lot of it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like the way comics looked in the, at the time. It doesn't look like the way art looks like now. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's remarkable, the, the technique. Um, it's, it's before he Corbin got heavy into the airbrushing, so it's, it's, there's airbrushing in the background, but the figures and most of the art is all painted in 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 a way that's unusual. Uh, and it's like that. That's oh, it's so good. Yeah, I can't <laughs> even imagine how that uh, comes off in person. I mean, it's just yeah. it's spectacular. I mean, and, it, and, it, and in print, you know, Warren was pretty good at the at the gray tone printing, but it, you know, it's not the same thing as seeing it in person. And it's a good story. It's like a, it's a classic, you know, twist, you know, that like Warren style twist on, on kind of classic stories. The werewolf uh, doesn't, it does, the story doesn't go where you think it's going to go. It's, uh, it's just, and every page is, is just amazing. And, and, you know, you know, these stories don't come up very often. Uh, every once in a while, you'll see a single page. I think, I think there was a page for sale just recently at one of our competitors. And I think a single page went for like $40,000, something exactly. like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's how, that's how much, you know, in demand this stuff is and what this story is going to end up at. We'll find out on Monday, but I, you know, and I, I, don't, I can't even guess you want to go to the second image and show this. The, the, the yeah, I do. And then we'll, yeah, then we'll move on. Sorry, everybody. We got to get through things. But yeah, these are just, it's just amazing. I mean, his technique, that's why I've always loved Corbin and especially this mm -hmm. period. I mean, it's just, you don't know how he did it, but though, I think it's interesting when you say that, you know, everybody in the office wanted to see it. I assume that at Metropolis, you have to have a few Corbin examples in there, but probably nothing quite like this. We don't, we don't actually have oh, any. Don't, really? Okay. Uh, so, so Steven Fischler, who's, you know, the, one of the owners of the company, mm -hmm has been around for a long time and he's seen a lot of things and he's a hard guy to impress. And, uh, he was impressed by this. 
So that, you know, that's what it's like sets off little, little, yeah. you know, alarms. It's like, okay. So a guy who's got the collection that he has, which is absurd, was impressed by this. Uh, that that's how good this story, you know, Richard Corbin's art from this time period was. And Corbin was great for his whole career, but this stuff, man, I, I can't even imagine how long this took to draw. That's, I mean, look at that panel with all the monsters in it. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, I just get rid of that word, word balloon. So I'll, I'll, you'll, I never me, you'll never hear me say that again. <laughs> get rid of that word balloon. I want to see more more art, right? I mean, that's I that's what you want out of this. I think Doug Mensch wrote this story. It's a little wordy. <laughs> good story though good story and uh, the uncle creepy images are all original which is nice mm -hmm. you don't you know sometimes those are you know stats sure but it's great it's great everybody go to the website you can study the the pages um but oh we also real quickly while we're here yep so this story is reprinted in color in the 80s these are the color guides for the color version of the story We'll go through these real quick. Uh, these are by an artist named Herb Arnold. That's uh, he was he was a frequent collaborator with Corbin. This this the story and the colors and there's a, uh, a Herb Arnold story. It's also from Creepy. That's in the auction. Uh, all comes from Herb Arnold's widow, and so all the money goes to them. It's uh it's great. Uh, this is cool. Also as a single lot in the auction. Uh, under under her barn, so separate from the Corbin section. So so that'll be something ending early ish as It'll well. be ending before the uh Corbin story. Yeah. I've been more than once now. All right. Well, it'd be nice to keep them together, that's for sure. Yeah, no, it'll be interesting to see what happens. All right, next. Another All right. another really, really good piece. Yeah, I'll I'll go over to you here for a yeah. second. John Bisema, yes. Silver Silver Judgment Day. I know the story's all Slash pages, but not many of them are better than this one. No. So Galactus, Nova, a defeated Silver Surfer. Then Galactus is huge. He takes up nearly the entire page. Uh, Bisema inking himself. He had inking assists, but I almost definitely that was just backgrounds. Um, and Bisema inking himself is one of the best thing best things in in comics over the last fifty years. Uh, and Galactus is, you know, Galactus is awesome. Yeah, I would be happy to have a page with Galactus on it. Yeah. And I, I don't have one yet. Uh, me neither. <laughs> they're they're getting harder and harder to uh, to get. A lot of people fighting over Galactus pages, but that's a good one. Um, yeah, fantastic, fantastic. All right, let's move on. I want to get through as much as we can in our. I agree with our uh, hard act tonight. Uh, Wolverine, Wolverine number ninety-seven, Adam Kubert. This is, uh, yeah, some classic 90s Wolverine. Of course, the camera's there. Um, and this is, and that's Wolverine and Chimera, who makes her first appearance in this issue. So it's a cool, yeah, very 90s Wolverine and very, very uh, X Men animated series style, which is, you know, everybody loves that. And this is cool. Kubert, Kubert's Wolverine and Kubert's X Men art from this time period is all is all pretty great. This is talented family, and it's annoying. <laughs> There's another Kubert X Men. I think we're gonna, I was gonna say I think we're gonna see it for generations to come. It could be, could be. Is there a third generation of Kubert's in the works? I think I think it's in the works. I mean, I'm assuming there is a third generation yes. of Kubert. So I'm wondering if they uh, make comics. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, but this is a, yeah, it's a great piece. So I, it I, is a really I, nice I know piece. there's going to be a lot of interest in that one. Yeah, you know, Wolverine's yeah. always a draw, but, uh, but yeah, sure. this is, you had Kubert on top of that, and then uh, yeah, yeah no, this is great. And all right, next, let's go back back a few decades from that one. This is uh, Detective Comics number four ninety six by Jim Parro, uh, Batman fighting Clayface, I think, uh, on a boat. Uh, so all, this is all all these faces on the side of original. The Batgirl and the Robin are not on the published. I'm sorry. The Black Lightning and the Robin are not on the published cover. The, they reformatted it. The format is different. Uh, the, this image was blown up. The title they changed the title treatment. Uh, this is a recreation. 
but this is what these spaces are original. The Batgirl was used on the published cover. Uh, Aparo, for me, is my Batman artist. He was the main Batman artist when I started reading Batman in the mm -hmm. mid-80s. Uh, so I've always, when I draw Batman, I draw Jim Aparo's Batman. Pointy ears, shadow in the front. You know, I can't help it. Uh, this is cool. Yeah, that is a pretty uh, slick design on there. I mean, I love the perspective on the on the ship beneath them. I, I always like I always like the like banner with the character faces along the side. I always thought that was cool, very comic booky device. Mm -hmm. oh, I agree. Uh, next, let's go back a couple decades from that one, or at least one a decade. Neil Adams, Lois Lane. Uh, that's that's technically Superman. But he's been transformed into a hideous monster, and uh, the other people in the background are confused that Lois Lane would be with such a hideous creature. But he's Superman. And we do have Superman here by Adams on the side, a nice heroic Superman figure on the side. This is 1969, so it's nice. Like I think that's like Neil Adams, like right in his peak. Uh, really great, you nice. And this, you know, as far as Neil Adams covers go. This is going to be more affordable than most. And that's something to be said for that. And it still has a great Superman figure on it. It's, it's, a, it's good drawing. Adams was a great artist. You know, one of the many, the list of artists that uh, we lost this year. It's been a bad year for comic book artists and comic book fans in general. That is for sure. Uh, you know, more well, Wayne, Wayne reminded me too about Emma Kubert. She's doing a thing with uh, Frank Miller on, uh, on one of oh, his. Oh, there you go. Yep. So there you go. Yeah, they were on an interview on Monday, I think, over wow. on Nick's channel. Wow. So, but yeah, this is a, this is a great one. I mean, how often do you get a get a Neil Adams, uh, you know, well, Lois Lane cover with Superman? It's got Superman, it's got Superman on. All right. Yeah. Next. Next one we got. All right. Ross Andrews. Yes. Maybe the best Ross Andrews Spider-Man panel page I've ever seen. Uh, it's it's great action. I love this giant Spidey in the in the, in the third panel. Just every panel is action. You know, you got Dr. Octopus's tentacles everywhere. It's, you know, as classic a Spider-Man villain as you, as you get. Um, this is just, it's, it's really, really good. And like all artwork, better in person. But that big Spidey figure is fantastic. It, and Andrew, you know, Andrew was underappreciated for a long time. I don't know that that's the case anymore. But, well, I think uh, there's some people who prefer Andrew over even Romita Senior. So you know well, that's, I, that's crazy. But I do love Romita. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I, I completely agree. But uh, but no, this is a uh, you know it's a fantastic page. I mean, kind of get I mean, Doc. Make the argument that Andrew might have done action better than Romita did. Well, yeah, that's but, true. I mean, Romita Senior's ro romance background might have oh, slowed him down a little bit. But that's what made that 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 was the charm of him working on Peter Parker and Spider Man. Absolutely. I've seen a fair amount of Andrew Spider-Man pages. I've never seen a better one yeah. for, you know, for an interior panel page. Yeah. It's really nice. I mean, those two horizontal panels with the, with the figures breaking the you know, yeah. border there. I mean, that's really, really nicely done. And even yeah. down here at the bottom, I mean, yeah, yeah. Th this is a really gorgeous page. And Aunt May getting, uh, getting knocked on her keister down at the bottom. Uh. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Oh man, but yes, uh, this is a this is a beauty. Whoever ends up with this one is going to be really yeah. That's, that's that's a good pick. Uh, next, Jack Kirby, Thor. Oh. Four panels, four panels of Thor action. Uh, Kirby Coletta as Thor should always be. Just yeah, I, I love the Thor kind of leaping out of the shadows in the first panel. It's just you know. A great Thor action page, a classic Kirby four panel page. You know, this is 1968. So this would be an early, early small art Kirby page. Uh, but just excellent, excellent content. And it's got, it's got a great sound effect in it because spoing is a great sound effect. <laughs> I, I did enjoy that. But uh, yeah, issue 154. So yeah, that is like right around the time they switched over to the small. Yeah, I don't know. Different titles switched at different times, but right around then. 
It's funny, uh, you know. Maybe, you look at that. You look at that first panel with Thor. I see Mike Mignola in that. But then I, I, guess I, I guess I think uh, my, you know Mike Mignola was you know you, you know where that Kirby uh, influence that he talks about. You, you, you see something like that, and uh, wow, you know it's yeah. it's it's striking. No, for sure. Uh, great artists are influenced by great artists. That's true. All right, yeah, Paul Ryan. An another Paul Ryan. He didn't die this year, but couple years ago which is unfortunate but a nice avengers cover from the 80s lots of you know vision scarlet witch falcon blob it's a um, i forget what the team is called at this point the to go in the pyro and blob and oh the, the freedom force i think they thought they were good guys i should read this <laughs> yeah that doesn't sound right <laughs> yeah wasp vision thor so it's a nice cover. Tom Palmer Inc. is one of the best inkers ever. That's uh, that is for sure. Another yeah. artist. Classic eighties cover. Really, really, really nice. Yeah, I like that one a lot as well. That one stuck yeah. out to me when I was going through yeah. the. You know, like, it's funny. We we put these options together, and you know, you know our our auctions have been getting better as far as quantity goes. So. Mm -hmm. We're getting to the point now where, you know, by the time the auction starts, I don't remember everything that's in it because, you know, it's a lot. And some of it is stuff that we processed months ago. Right. Uh, so it's like, you know, it's, it's like, you know, go through this stuff when the auctions actually get a beginning and I'm you know, starting to promote and I'm seeing pieces that I totally forgot that were even <laughs> in the auction and it's like seeing them for the first time. Again. It's a uh, joy. Yeah. Another, another pretty great cover. Batman Demon Brave and the Bold by uh, Rich Buckler, Jim, inked by Jim Aparo. Uh, Batman and the Demon, Batman turning into a bat, which is, I believe that's irony. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but another like glory, like classic Bronze Age Batman cover. Only in the 70s would Batman be turning into a bat. Yes, and only over at DC would you see this something like this happen. Absolutely, <laughs> but yeah. what a great cover! I mean, I love. So great, she would be fat or old or a baby. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> I I have uh, been looking for a nice Buckler piece for a while. It's just his stuff is hard to find. I mean, I I love his work and he's so prolific and it's just funny. I've just not been yeah. able to find the right piece yet. We've had no shortage of Buckler recently. Well, I'm gonna uh, keep my eyes out then. Yeah. Uh, all right, next. All right, what do we got here? Another, oh, another legacy artist, John Romita Jr. This is 1982. Uh, Spider-Man and Mr. Hyde and uh, Cobra. Uh, Romita Jr. inked by Jim Mooney. A great splash page. This is a uh, the end of end story splash, the last page of the story. <clears throat> and Romita... <clears throat> Ramita Jr. is an interesting artist. He's like a, a chameleon. You know, there's a lot of different, not a chameleon, that's not the right word, but he evolved over time. It's like three or four distinct styles that he had over his career. Mm -hmm. And they're all good. And they're all identifiably Ramita Jr. Um, but this is a nice one from his, he's, you know, still relatively young at this point. <clears throat> I still think of him as young, but. Right, right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the Mooney, like Mooney inks on this one are really nice too. Yeah. Uh, this is this is another cool cool piece. And another again, another, uh, the nice thing about splash pages, and I I'm a, I do love panel pages, but the nice thing about splash pages is that you you could never get a Spider Man this big in a panel page. You know that that's a big Spider Man. He's a half the page. You know you don't generally get that much detail on uh, on the on the heroes like that covers. And splash pages. That's really it. Very true. Yeah. No. So it, this is a nice one. And I, yeah. you know, it's like it's such a good storyline. You always remember like the title page to the next, you know, issue too. It's just this is a, yep. like a classic sequence. So yeah, this is fantastic. Yep. Speaking of covers, next cover and Thor on this cover is smaller than Spider Man was on that splash page, but <laughs> a pretty great Thor cover. Dave Cockrum. Uh, Dave Cockrum inked by Bob McCloud. Just uh, another, this is 1979. <clears throat> Just a great, a classic, heroic Thor swinging, uh, swinging his uh, hammer, fighting some, fighting some monsters. 
because that's what Thor does. And every issue with Thor, because the Earth is doomed. The Earth is doomed. It's like a, he's such a good fan. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what is this? Oh, it's two eighty four was the yeah. Uh, issue. Yeah, no, it's it's cool. I love you know Cockrum really did uh, some great work for Marvel. He really did. Yeah. You know, he yeah. gets you know people kind of you know they think about the X Men, but he and as good as the, and you know he did great work on X Men, but Cockrum did a lot of good work, you know, across the board. So, and this is just a nice example of that. That's a pretty great Thor image. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's it's getting better the more I look at it. So I need to look away. <laughs> Uh, modern, modern cover. Uh, this is uh, Mike Mayhew, Black Cat. This was a variant. I think it was a variant cover, uh, but still beautiful, beautiful painting. Uh, everybody loves Black Cat. So a lot of Black Cat art in this auction too. Um, it comes with Mike Mayhew's uh, COA, so you know it's genuine. Yeah, Mike is one of the most prolific variant cover artists out there today. Yeah. But he's, you know, deservedly so. He's he's just uh, I, I dig it. I expect uh, I expect it to do very well. Mm -hmm. uh, another cover, creepy fifty one. Fifty one. Yeah, fifty one. San Julian. That's got a lot of glare on it. This little gothic horror. Little lady being burned at the stake. You know, my favorite thing about this cover. See if we can. Can you pull it up? Uh, yes, I can. Annoying. Is the uh, the house in the background? The the the, uh, the way that 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 he knocks the background back, and it's sort of shadowed and faded, really captures that that the style you want in, a, in an image like this. That you know, this could be the cover to like a Lovecraft novel, right? Or uh, you know, or like a you know a nineteenth century horror horror novel. You know, just that great, great, you know, moody painting. And the figure's great. I like the way she's writhing, you know, it's kind of writhing and twisting. Uh, and, you know, a little girl in the background just kind of watching. That's great. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's funny because I actually never didn't even notice the buildings in the back. But that's probably just because it's uh, it's painted so well. I'm so, I was yeah. so absorbed by the expression on the figure. Uh, you know, on the, on the central figure there that I didn't even notice the buildings in the background. And, and like like the Corbin, you know, you see a lot of San Julian art because mm -hmm. he was prolific and he's still working, but you don't see a lot of his art from this time period. That's yeah, very true. <laughs> that's, that's, that's one way to look at it. That is. Uh, She's not right. well done yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. All right. Next. Batman. Guy, uh, Irv Novik, a lot, a lot going on here. But you know, this is a this is a great title page. Great Novik. This is 1981. Oh, you got a lot of Catwoman, Robin, and um, Talia, Talia back there, and I forget who that guy is. But uh, yeah, it's just a classic. The late, late like late Blonde Bronze, early Copper Age, Batman story pre, you know, pre the revamp. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just great drawing. Ink by Frank McLaughlin, another another quality inker. Uh, I love a good <laughs> title page. This is nice. I do like title pages. I like I love uh, indices. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of uh, pages with indices. I have a few of those. None as good as that. <laughs> All right, what do you got next? John Byrne, Captain um, America. Oh, it's Captain America. Jesus. Uh, John Byrne, um, FF, FF with, uh, yeah, mo it's mostly in humans. Got the thing back there. Yeah. That, that, that's the whole Fantastic Four is there, but in black hole and some alien, but like great period burn FF 1982, uh, issue 248, uh, black Bolt is actually speaking. So you got, you don't see a lot of pages of black Bolt speaking. That's no. for sure. But I love Burns art from this time period. I, I personally prefer Burns art on FF to his art on X-Men, but that's because I'm a weirdo. So I'm a Burns Superman guy, and that's my time period for Burns, so this is closer to that. And Burns X-Men art is great. I'm not taking anything away from it. I mean, do you like it because he inks it. himself more? Or? I, I, I like Burn inking himself. Yeah. Um, you know, 
Don't judge me. I, hey, I'm not going to. I mean, I'll I'll still take his X Men art over FF, but I, I'm an X Men guy. I mean, you know, it, I'd take an FF page if I could get one of these. Things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't have one of those either. Uh, all right, speaking of things that are great, so two pieces by Bernie Wrightson from House of Secrets '92. This is the pencils. So the first two panels from page one that Wrightson rejected. I'm going to take these out so you can see them better. Uh, let me take them out again so we can. Here, I'll even put, I'll pull up the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, even in person though, it's like this. It's hard to scan pencils. So let's uh let's close yeah, up yeah, let's on switch it. back. Yeah, switch back to you there. So it's 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 basically the same as the first two panels as they appear in the book, but he had originally drawn them to be three across mm -hmm. and changed his mind, so he redid it. So these are the first two panels ever drawn from House of Secrets 92. So, you know, probably not the first time he ever drew Swamp Thing, but, you know, the first time he drew Swamp Thing in, a, in an actual page to be published. Um, these were gifted by Wrightson to Mike Kaluta. That's hence the two Mike in the Wrightson uh, part of it. It's writing up here is Kaluta's handwriting, basically saying what the, uh, what the art is. That says rejected from Splash of Bernie Wright's Swamp Thing, done for DC Comics. I play the villain, which makes me think that Kaluta modeled for the villain. Uh, Wheezy Jones is the woman. She's famously on the cover. Right. Bernie modeled as the creature himself, which is cool. Yeah, what a fun uh, time. To I mean, this is this is and and this was drawn. This was drawn. It, it signed rights for by rights in 1970. The comic didn't come out until 1971, so this was drawn well before the published uh, book. And uh, also, that's very cool. So, and to go with that, auctioned separately, but with it, is Wrightson's colors, to Wrightson's hand-colored color guide for page one. So you can see where he changed the first two panels. Right. Um, but yeah, this is, First page from House Secrets 91, Wrightson's Colors. It's, it, yeah. His, this is, you know, this is history. And if anybody ever comes to our office, we have the cover hanging in our hall. Yes, you do. I think we saw that <laughs> on a quick tour with Vinny almost two years ago when he was you know, kind of racing through things. We had, we had a guy come by the office today to, you know, pick up some books that he bought. And he was asking about House of Secrets 92s and talking about how he's, I'm going to keep this very short. Um, talking about how, like, that's his, like, comic book grail. Mm -hmm. And I, I had to pull him into the hallway and hurt his feelings a little bit by showing him the cover. <laughs> <laughs> Did he shed a tear? He was, he was, he was surprised. Yeah. Well, right. that's, that's, so that's, moving, that's, moving on. You, you, you are indeed the house of secrets over there. There are so many amazing True. pieces. Better, than, is it better to be the house of secrets or the house of mystery? That is true. Very true. So, all right. Yeah, this, this is a nice one. Yeah. Here, let's uh, take a look at it. The, uh, one of the dozens of variant covers to the Return of Wolverine number one. So, I don't know how much pencils are on this cover. There's definitely some original pencils on this cover. It's not inked entirely over a uh, blue line or a light box. But there are like a half a dozen covers of Wolverine in this exact same pose and this wearing different costumes from throughout his history. Um, but McNiven definitely worked on this piece himself. How much? Probably just the Wolverine figure and probably just the details on the figure. But definitely, there are definitely original McNiven pencils on this piece. So just because it is, it's a it's a question we've been asked because there are several covers that right. are nearly identical i mean the backgrounds are the same but they're redrawn in every cover so there's like slight differences but it's you know and that was the intent but i want to be clear that that mcniven definitely worked on this in you know himself inked by um inked by jay leaston but still a great great image of wolverine and if I was going to pick a Wolverine costume, I'd probably pick the black and tan or the brown and tan. Yeah, the well, inking on that one is really nice too. I mean, I yeah, love the, the it really is. here. Uh, 
and have a year to thin line that you know that he's using there to uh, kind of give things volume. I mean, it's yeah. spectacular. Jay did a great job on that. So we also have a couple of interior pages from Return Wolverine One. The, and the content in this first issue especially is really great. There's a lot of like Wolverine walking through his path. Mm -hmm. So a lot of Wolverine on this one. Uh, this page is also penciled on the page by McNiven. I bring that up because he didn't do the entire issue that way. So this page is penciled by McNiven on this board. That's page, uh, page seven. This is page 11 which is also inked by McNiven on this board. Uh, more Wolverine, Wolverining, but really beautiful drawing. Like McNiven's work on this book is great. Uh, and then we have page, this is page 28. This is oh, the wow. debut of the new costume that was introduced in this series. Mm -hmm. This page is not penciled on this board. So this page is inked over a blue line print. So I don't know why, he did about half the book over pencils and half the book over blue line, but that's how it was done. You can tell uh, in the uh, in the title, and the titles are different on the pages that were inked on blue line. It was written differently. Huh. But also you can see the blue line. Yeah. But so this page is, it is the published page, inked by Lyston, but uh, no McNiven pencils, unfortunately. But still, the debut of the costume. It's a great half splash of the Wolverine putting on his fancy new costume. And old Wolverine talking to him because, you know, Wolverine's a little bit crazy. <laughs> Very nice. Still beautiful. All right. This is uh, Richard Dragon Kung Fu Fighter number one by uh, Dick Giordano. So this cover is the first, technically the first appearance of Richard Dragon. This is also the first appearance of the character that will become the Bronze Tiger. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love Giordano crowd scenes. He's good at it. Uh, just it's cool. It's a cool the number one cover from 1980. It's just a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh, when comics were still fun, <laughs> comics can still be fun. Uh, yeah, so they they can still be. Yeah, no, I know. But I know what you mean, though. This is this is the heyday. I I love modern comics. I still read comics. I'm not I'm not judging. But yeah, this, but it, this is a gorgeous piece. I mean, it really is. I mean, he yeah. you're, like you just said, he could draw a, a big crowd scene like uh, like anybody could. I mean, you yeah. know, this is uh, really well done. I love the inking on that one too. Yep. And next, uh, inked by Giordano again, but. Penciled by Mike Sikowski. This is uh, showcase number 92. It's uh, Manhunter 2070, but a really great uh, late 60s, 1970s. So late Silver Age uh, showcase. I think showcase, showcase didn't last a lot longer after this. But I like this cover because it's so morose for the time period. You know. It is pretty somber. Yeah. It's like mourning the death of his crew. Oh, yeah. His his family, you know, it's, it's, it's really sad. Burying uh, them all on little asteroids. Yeah. Yep. I want to be buried on an asteroid. <laughs> uh, that's how I want to go. Uh, I've always liked Tchaikovsky. We've talked about that before. Uh, m maybe, you know, he's one of my favorite DC Silver Age artists. Uh, and, and this is a really, I, I like the somberness of this piece. It's, yeah, it's cool. I, 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 I dig it. Yeah, no, it, it's really well done. Yeah, like the, uh, even in the even the you know space spacesuit design yeah. is pretty cool. His little, his little his little ship floating in the background. Yeah. I just pointed at the screen. Nobody could see what I was pointing at. But that's <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I do it all the time. <laughs> all right, Mark. Oh, you can't see this at all. Pencils, pencils again. This is a Mark Bagley Spider-Man number eighty. Uh, 80 dot bay, which I don't know what that means, but that's technically the number of this issue. Uh, I don't know what that means. So if anybody knows, feel free. But there's a lot. This is a cool cover: Spider-Man, Doctor Octopus, and Aunt May. Uh, you don't see a lot of Bagley covers with this big a Spidey and with other stuff going on. So this is the Bagley's original pencils. Uh, 
to to what I think is a pretty great cover. Yeah, it is nice. And uh, we got Doc Ock and yeah, and Aunt May, Aunt May in there done like that. I think it's, around the time that they it just, uh, yeah, I think this is recent. I don't think this is to when they were uh, an item, but it could be. Well, this is 2018, but maybe they were kind of revisiting that. Yeah, cause that's just something that's popped up over the years. So yeah, it's very possible. That is very nice. Bagley, you know, Bagley's positioned himself as one of like the, you know, you know, a top tier Spider-Man artist. He's been working on Spider-Man for what, well, thirty years. Yeah, his you know? uh, well, his mighty artwork is very, very much in demand. Yeah, I mean, and he's got. We have a page coming up that's from his. I think his second Spider-Man story ever. Wow. An issue of What If from like 1988 or something like that. 1987, 88. Uh, all right, next. This is Billy Chuchi from the first She series. Uh, Chuchi has never sold a cover from the first She series before. This is the first one that's ever become available. So from uh, 1995, this She, this is number four, She Way of the Warrior number four. Uh, great. Big image, very, very 90s femme fatale. She was right in there with the, you know, the biggest of those. And this is cool. And it's cool to be able to be the first people to bring one of these covers to auction. And uh, I hope it does well, because she was a good comic. It was a it was a big deal back, back you know, and, you know, still, people still like it. So. Uh, I have, I have, uh, I have nice, high expectations for this. I, I think this is cool, and and again, because they've never been for sale before, right. it's you know, it's a rare opportunity. And I don't know if he's going to part with any more. So, nice one. Well, you're hearing that more and more from yep. uh, artists that they're holding onto their artwork. I mean, I'm sure the market's a little bit influencing that, but but it, it is uh, it's a common theme, and with a lot of the creators I've been speaking to. That sure. they're like, well, I sold enough already. I'm keeping the rest, giving to my kids, whatever. Yep. They're they're holding on to them. Sure, I'm hearing that from collectors too. Yeah, the collectors are like, you know, I'll sell some things, but some of the stuff's going to my kids. And I'm like, but no. <laughs> <laughs> um, John Romita Jr. again, contest of champions. Uh, I talked about this a little bit last time. We had a contest of champions page in the last auction too. This was originally done as a 1980 Summer Olympics tie-in as a uh, Marvel. I was going to be a treasury. Uh, there. Obvi for obvious reasons that did not get published as as, as that because mm -hmm. we were not in the 1980 Summer Olympics. So this page is cool. It's got this huge X Men battle panel, Alpha Flight up here, X Men fighting down here, like pretty much the whole team: Wolverine, Cyclops, Storm, Colossus, uh, Nightcrawler. It, yeah, that's a great panel. Uh, in the in this panel, these chairs that are empty here. There's white out over all of them. And in you can see, if you hold the page up to the light, what was whited out was a bunch of athletes <laughs> because it was supposed to be a Summer Olympics thing. Right. So they, they, were, they were whited out here, and they were supposed to, a bunch of them were like laying unconscious on the floor down here. It was also whited out. So that's a little piece of history. And Contest of Champions, also the first comic miniseries ever. Or first Marvel, maybe the first Marvel miniseries, but mm. still, uh, that's cool too. Nice piece. Yeah, it really is. Uh, all right. Alex Savick, Spider-Man. Nice Spider-Man versus the Hulk battle page. The 1990, but like prime Savick. Uh, this is Web of Spider-Man? Yeah, Web of Spider-Man number 469. But cool two heroes going at it. Excellent. Moving along. Steve Epting, Captain America number six. This is from the issue that introduced the Winter Soldier. Uh, this panel here is ridiculous. Every line in this panel is wrong. There's no digital trickery here. He's not pasting in a, a photograph, which is honestly, I think, what I would have done. This is insane. The idea of drawing this makes my brain hurt. Uh, but really, a beautiful drawing. And it's like a huge image cap flying down and the parachuting down, uh, Nick Fury up at the top. Beautiful piece from a, from a, from an important comic. You know, Winter Soldier is an important character and this is his first issue. 
Yeah, that, that that page really is gorgeous. But you know, and like you say, they could have taken shortcuts on the city, and I, I think I've seen a I, lot I, of pages from this. But it's so it, it just. Artists were back. doing that before this, like you know, I yeah. I'm, I was shocked that he drew all that. Shocked, and he drew it in a way that looks like he didn't. Steve Epping is a talented man. That's all. All right, moving along. Welcome back, Cotter number ten. Maybe the best cover on the Welcome Back Cotter series. Uh, it's got the whole. Sweat Hog Gang, little uh, Vinny Barbarino. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is great. Bob Oxner. Uh, yeah, great. 70s TV TV series comic. I, I like uh, I like all those 70s TV comics. Partridge Family, Welcome Back, Cotter. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of fun stuff. All right. This one makes me sad a little bit. Tim Sale yeah. from Spider-Man Blue. It's the last page of Craig and Hunter. Really, Kim Sale was great. And uh, it's another one of those guys where it's unfortunate that we've seen all the art by him that we're going to see. And this is a really nice one. Yeah, that, that really is uh, an incredible splash page. Uh, I'm going to try to get through some stuff quickly. Yeah, I understood. Uh, this is Herb Trimpey inked by John Severin, which is a combination I never thought happened, but is really good. That's us. Uh, Hulk versus the Colossus, and Severin Zinking is really present. And it's just a really nice page aside from that. It's a really great, it looks like it could have been from an issue of Heavy Metal, like really interesting uh, drawing from Trippy and Severin. I like the page a lot. That's funny that you make that Heavy Metal reference. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Just doesn't, uh, you don't, uh, yeah. take the Hulk out of there, and that's exactly yeah. what it is. That's amazing. The, Don Heck from uh, Tales of Suspense number 66, the Iron Man and Atuma, the recent movie star Atuma. Mm -hmm. And, and that's cool, Silver Age Don Heck Marvel. There's another another page I like a lot. Uh, got a, three pages from Spectacular Spider Man 92. This is another Spidey black suit that came out before Secret Wars number eight. This is uh, Al Milgram inked by Jim Mooney. Spider-Man is in every panel of every page. So every oh, page of Spider-Man in every panel. Dang. And uh, two of the pages have Spider-Man uh, flirting with the black cat. And in one of them, it cuts away with implications. <laughs> yeah, two of them have Spider-Man and black cat kissing. <laughs> mm. but, yeah, yeah, these was this one the same issue that you, you, you had before in the, in the prior? Nope. nope. No. This is yeah, Spectacular 92. Those were uh, Spider-Man 252. 252. That, all right. You're right. Yeah. And then we have Spectacular 116, which is a little bit later after the, the Jeff Buckler secret from uh, Buckler back black suit from, uh, uh, yeah, like, uh, I don't know, what's that? 18, 28, 24 issues later. So this is a couple years later, still in the black suit, Spidey versus Sabretooth by Buckler. But yeah, these these are special because this is again early black suit pre pre Secret Wars eight, right? Yeah, uh, and again, I just you know, saber tooth page is great. That's yeah, great. no, for sure. Wow, for sure. Uh, and a couple of Alex Ross pages from Justice number four that fit the two consecutive pages. Uh, Hal Jordan uh, getting a little alarm here, and then Sinestro showing up and uh, transporting him off someplace. I really, I'm a big fan of this comic. I like. I thought Justice was a whole lot of fun, and uh, I love this Sinestro figure. I love this sort of stretchy Hal Jordan face, getting sort of zipped away, and that's Lex Luthor down at the bottom. Mm. Uh, these are great. I, I, Alex Ross is great. This, I don't know what else. You know, everybody knows that they're great, and people should bid on them. That's all. <laughs> End of plug. Uh, it's another Adam Kubert. This is from X Men 369. Double double spread. It's a juggernaut in some weird dimension. They're trying to stop him from something. Storm is in like a dream world, like uh, communicating with her, you know, like African gods, which is cool. Uh, it's Wolverine down at the bottom, very very tiny, and they go on to go after Juggernaut. He's there, I promise. Uh, cool. Uh, Kubert, Tim Townsend, X Men, uh, 1999. I, I love that big image of Juggernaut. 
It, yeah, no, that's yeah. great. I was going to ask you who the anchor was on it, but uh, yeah, I can now I can see Tim, Tim's signature there. Uh, let's see, we got New Warriors cover by Derek Robertson. See that? This is uh, I think this is the second series New Warriors. This is 2000, but still great. Speedball front and center, as he should always be. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a great composition uh, on that one. Yeah. Let's see. The Buckler, World's Unknown number three, the adaptation of this Dave Yurt stood still, which is cool. The Buckler and an anchor named Wayne Howard, who I had never heard of. But nice yeah, a Zipatone on the spaceship there? Zipatone with Zipatone with like uh, drawing, uh, the drawings all under it. It's an interesting Zipatone pattern. It's like a uneven crosshatch Zipatone. Unusual. Huh. But cool. Cool. Yeah, it is cool. Uh, 70s Marvel cover. This is uh, Ed Bennis, Secret, uh, sorry, Strange Adventures, number one, 2009. Uh, Bizarro and Adam Strange and uh, Comet. But everybody loves Bizarro Superman. And Ed Bennis knew it, so he made him the biggest. Nice cover. Yeah, a lot of a lot of great uh, detail on that one. Let's see, a couple of Alan Davis Excalibur pages, page permission number two, and then a page from issue fifty-five. Issue fifty-five is interesting because a lot of the art from that, like half the art from issue fifty-five, was lost. So this is inked over a photocopy of the pencil. Hmm. But what makes it interesting, and I think more interesting than it would otherwise be, is it's inked by Davis over a photocopy of his own pencil. And from what I can, from I mean, I don't, I'm not, you know, saying this with any uh, a certainty, but I think it might. It's the only time I've ever seen Davis inking himself in a, in an Excalibur. So it's it's interesting and unique because of the unfortunate nature of losing the pencils. Davis ended up inking them himself. So really nice ink work by Davis, and uh, good content. A great Nightcrawler page. And, yeah, the page for issue two is nice too. I would say that yeah, that, that issue two page is pretty pretty nice yeah. as well. I, I, I have a huge weakness for the next caliber, so. uh three pages, three Ditko Machine Man pages, issues 15, 16, and 18. Uh I talked about this last time, but these pages are very rare. Ditko, you know, uh famously didn't sell his artwork, so these came from Tom DeFalco, who wrote these issues. And uh, yeah, there's there's very few Ditko Machine Man pages out in the wild, so these are up in the auction. Uh, the biggest image of Cerebus in an interior page I've ever seen, Cerebus 150, so exactly at the halfway point. Uh, really, I'm a fan of the comic. Not not so much the man, but the comic. <laughs> you can't take away a guy's talent. Uh, no, you can't. Tim is great. And this is, again, I've never seen him draw Cerebus this big. Holding Jocka's doll, for people who are familiar with the story, that's important. Uh, nice, nice page. Kill one is here. Uh, let's see, Burn She-Hulk, more Burn inking himself. This is a great page, She-Hulk and half of the Fantastic Four. So Reed and, and Ben uh, by Burn. Again, She-Hulk. Uh, she hope was a good comic, and you know it was good because they stole all Burns' kind of jokes for the TV show. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Which, again, is part of what made the show good. Uh, this is uh, Scott Eaton, History of Marvel Comics, number one. Really good image of like the Marvel's big characters, Wolverine, Thor, Hulk, uh, Iron Man, Captain America, Spider-Man. Uh, really nice drawing from Eaton. Uh, this, is a nice, this is a nice drawing. This is a you know, one of those like classic Marvel images. I like it. Uh, 2012. Yeah, that is really uh, cool. Talk about the three Alfred E. Newman paintings. These are from uh, Mad Super Special from 1971. 71? 71. And the, uh, it featured like an insert of like portraits of Alfred E. Newman as different characters throughout history. So this is Alfred the Chicken Hearted, Alfred Lincoln. And uh, Toot on Newman, Toot on Newman, 
<laughs> uh, I, these are by Bob Clark, a like classic Marvel, a Mad Magazine artist. Yeah. Uh, full disclosure, the faces on all of them are pre-printed to keep the consistency of Alfred Newman's face in each one. He did paint over the printed face in each of them, so all the facial details are painted over the skin tone, the beard, any little facial features. The backgrounds are all fully painted. But these are beautiful pieces. Uh, yeah, I mean, these are cool. I like them a lot. Good paintings. Uh, all right. Lady Death Vampirella, Stephen Hughes. You know, another guy who's unfortunately not producing work anymore, but, you know, Vampirella's, you know, consistently popular. We have a lot of Vampirella art in the auction besides this, but this is the only one with by Stephen Hughes. With, and it's a great full full pat, full page Lady Death Vampirella. This could be a cover. Nice. Yeah, I always like Stephen Hughes' work. Uh, Mark Teixeira Wolverine. Although well, Wolverine's not on it, but it does have a whole bunch of X-Men. So Cyclops, Iceman, Jubilee, Silox, Colossus. Uh, Teixeira is 1993, so like nice period Teixeira. Uh, really, he's a he, still still a good artist. He's really his line is he says that he draws like a painter. It's uh, mm -hmm. you know I've, I've watched him draw. And even watching him draw, he draws like a painter. It's interesting. It's fun to watch him draw. This is a really nice page. Yeah, the uh, interiors of that ship are just yeah crazy. Yeah. The way he's uh, kind of filled the whole page with just the interiors of the ship like that. That's that's amazing. Uh, Buckler Man Thing Flash from yeah. uh, Fear Number Eleven, like the. Fourth or fifth man thing appearance. Uh, Darwin Cook, New Frontier, maybe the best superhero comic of the century so far. Hal Jordan. Uh, I think a lot Hal of Jordan. people feel that feel that way about it. That book too. It's a great. I mean, Darwin Cook. You know, he was an extraordinary talent. New Frontier, I think, is what really solidified that and then he and then he did better work later but not superhero work mm -hmm. um yeah this is yeah it, it, i i love i love drawing very very much i'm that's a nice one uh bruce tim painted back girl you're beautiful i love bruce tim's color work nice little drawing uh shelly moldoff batman sunday 1966 uh, Moldoff only drew 10 Batman Sundays. He drew the first 10. This is the seventh. Uh, Batman and the Penguin and a girl who looks like but is not Harley Quinn because it was 1966. But And some ostriches. Very cool. It is I, 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 I like that a lot. Uh, Carmine Infantino Star Wars page. This is Star Wars number 28. That there is Jabba the Hutt. That's his first panel appearance since the adaptation of the original movie. So... This is the first appearance of a Jabba the Hutt in not in an adaptation. Uh, and I think that's hilarious. And I love Infantino Star Wars work. That's the Millennium Falcon down there, tiny little Chewbacca. Uh, I like this page a lot. Uh, Barry Smith, Machine Man, Machine Man number one. Uh, I, I don't know what it needs to be said about Barry Smith. I think, you know, he's one of the best artists, best pure artists who ever drew comics. And this is one of my favorite works of his, the Machine Man series. I think he did really extraordinary work. Uh, Dick Giordano again, Pencils and Inks, uh, Green Lantern back up from an issue of Flash, Green Lantern all over it. Really, again, beautiful drawing by Giordano. This is 1973. It's an unpublished Silver Surfer cover for the Silver Surfer Requiem series by Asad Ribic. I don't know why they didn't publish this. It's great. Spider-Man, Silver Surfer. So Rivik is, a, is another guy who's really just an extraordinary talent. Yeah, he I mean, continues to get better. Yeah, it's true. I've watched him draw a little bit too, and it just makes me angry because it's like, stop being so good. Speaking of too good, Bill Sienkiewicz, this is uh, from a comic called Alias, but not the Alias you're thinking of. This was the Alias from Now Comics. It's 1990. Um, I love how moody this piece is. This is like great noir Sienkiewicz. Never seen him use this signature like, other, anyplace else, but it's odd. Definitely, definitely using Kevich. Uh, beautiful painting. I love, I love 
this could be a like a noir, like a pulp novel from the 70s. It's beautiful. Uh, go on the website. We can look at it. Next, we're gonna, sorry about the glare. Uh, this is uh, Dennis Cowan. Oh, who is that? <laughs> Dennis Cowan. This is Moon Knight number, yeah. number, Moon Knight number 16. Uh, Moon Knight all over it. Uh, this is uh, more Moon Knight. This is Marvel Fanfare number 38. This is so. This is by Judith Hunt, but the inks are by Sienkiewicz. So it's, it's a really cool. Uh, it's still technically still Sienkiewicz Moon Knight. This is 1988, signed by both of them. Uh, you get to see Moon Knight's face, which is which is unusual. Uh, but another really nice page. It'd be under Hunt in the auction, under Judith Hunt in the in the auction, but inks by Sienkiewicz. Uh, Starlin Man Thing, Fear number 12. Uh, this is a really beautiful Gene Colan uh, detective comics page. Be I love this Batman sort of half silhouette. Uh, How do we ink that one? This is inked by Alfredo Alcala. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I love the way he didn't fill in the black. The classic Alcala thing. But really, I, 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 Colan was really great at mood, and this is a, a great example of that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we only got a couple minutes too. I know, I know. I'm trying to, trying to get <laughs> I hate to tell you. Michael Turner, the Witchblade trading card art. Uh, this is uh, Bob Brown Avengers. This is that early Bagley Spider Man. This is What If number four. So this is uh, yeah, basically yeah, doing a the big what what if I don't have the story title. I don't know. What if something. But it's great. But Spidey, Black Cat, Spidey and Black Cat kissing again. They did that a lot. This drawing, this is a stat, but there is drawing. It's a different version of the panel underneath it. So there is drawing underneath that stat. Uh, it's at the origin of the black suit. My great early Bagley. Uh, this is a so this is a double slash of Superman fighting Doomsday from Superman 175. So this is the hundredth issue after the death of Superman. They brought right. Doomsday back. This year is the thirtieth anniversary of the death of Superman. Uh, go on the website to see this whole thing. It's a really nice double double splash. I had big guess. Uh, P. Craig Russell, Son of Satan. Really, I the drawing of the series is fantastic. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're getting through this. Art Adams, Monkey Man and O'Brien. I think the the most Art Adamsiest Art Adams art. Uh, Herb Trimpey, Godzilla. Herb Trimpey, Shogun Warriors. Dave Dorman, Cheval Noir. Painted wraparound cover. Uh, 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 there's a lot. There's a lot in the auction. There's a lot I didn't get to. There's a lot of good stuff that I didn't get to. It's a strong auction. I implore people to look at it on the site and look through everything. And uh, there's a lot of how many lot of pieces are in this auction? It's like 365 or something like that. All right, that that is uh, a lot. It's a lot. Every, there's, every there's, 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 a lot of, there's a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of affordable pieces right now that shouldn't be, so it's worthwhile uh, to have a look through it because there's, you know, that's the thing about auctions is that every auction from every auction house has pieces that sneak through. I bought a page from one of our competitors yesterday hey, for what I thought was a very reasonable price. We, uh, no, not, we, it's an know. embarrassment of, of comic art riches yeah. out there right and, now that know, we have to go as much as the, the high, you know, art is, is increasing in value, and as it should, that's, it's art. But that doesn't mean that there aren't bargains to be had or affordable pieces to be had. And, uh, you know, you don't, it's easy to get distracted by the shininess of, like, the big, um, you know, big, it's the big flashy, like, Stellar, amazing! Like the, the Corbin story is extraordinary, but you know that's out of out of the realm of of opportunity for uh, most collectors. Oh, yeah. But but that doesn't mean that there aren't great things to be had, and that's why I I, I you know I, I want people to look through the entire auction, not just at the big pieces. Yep, as as they should. So the auction ends next Monday. Monday, Monday ending Monday, at uh, what seven p.m. Eastern? Is that when yeah. it starts? Okay, so. Uh, I'll be in the office during the auction. If anybody has questions, I'll be I'll be here to uh, answer them. All right. Or you know, my email is just uh, Micah S at, at comicconnect.com. If anybody has any questions they want 
to one I asked, asked before. I'll be in the office tomorrow as well. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think I'm proud of this auction. I'm proud of the way our auctions have been going over the past couple of years. And, um, you know, and, and we couldn't do that without the consigners or the bidders. And I, I appreciate all of them. Yeah. No, you guys have done a fantastic job in the last two, three years, or even before that, of course, but the last couple of years have really been, I don't know what, before three years ago. <laughs> but uh but listen man you know i i appreciate it we got it we're gonna get it right next text time we're gonna have a dedicated show unlimited amount of time to talk about arts so we can pretty much uh, we, already, and we've already got some nice stuff for the next one so it, awesome. it, it, it's shaping up to be another good one so all right. Well, thank, thank you for doing this as always. Uh, you know, I, I'll be looking at, you know, we're actually going to, we are going to do a kind of a combined auction recap the Monday after next, which will include where we're picking some pieces from Comic Connect and, and a couple of your competitors that, you know, that are either coming up to end or just ended. You know, it's, and it's amazing, it's amazing how many pieces there are that come up. You know, there's, there's enough to go around. It's, it's, it's a big world, you know, there is. I'm not, I'm not bitter. All right. Well, I got to switch over to my other show. Uh, I think anybody watching this show will just get automatically transferred over to the other one. But uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in. And Micah, again, thank you for taking the time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for watching. And uh, yeah, good luck and if I, and if for anybody who's going after anything in the office. All right. Take care, Micah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good night.